Hi, welcome on your PD education and you are watching the series of videos which we have launched free on uh, YouTube. Uh, as I told you for Airport Authority of India, 20% of the things we are going to provide you free and that is what this entire process is all about. So, in uh, the Airport Authority of India, the different jobs declared in the Airport Authority of India, there is one job for the Airport in airport operations, uh, I told you earlier also there are there are certain things which actually are very very important. This part A, part B is the syllabus of airport uh, operations job, junior executive. In that part A, this is the topic which actually uh, is the topic which comprises 20% of part A, right? So these are the terms related to aviation sector only, aviation related topics. So if I see previous year's questions, so they have asked very common awareness uh, related questions in the previous years from airport authority and I was talking to some of uh, my students who are working there that what kind of I mean question can be asked and we did analysis so I came to know that okay some terms they are going to ask in this exam which I'm going to discuss with you and this is the uh, third lecture which I'm uploading for this particular part only and this is related to organizational structure you know I was uh, referring to this particular part in that so organizational structure part I was talking to and in this organizational structure, we need to see what is the hierarchy. I mean, in any aviation organization, uh, air, air, uh, aerospace related organization, what is at the top, which uh, authority is at the top, followed by what is the next authority. So that kind of organizational structure or hierarchy is something which uh, uh, is asked, like chairman, director general, directors, director personnel, secretaries. So what are the various, uh, uh, I mean, authorities in this entire organization? So this is the organization structure of Airport Authority of India. In today's lecture, I am talking about the Airport Authority of India itself. That is a government body. Uh, so Airport Authority of India only, I am talking about the, at the top you get to know at the top there is chairman, you know. And then executive director is there, safety, company secretary, chief vigilance officer, ED, executive director, PMQA, and then comes other members, you know, member operation, member finance. So little bit this, this particular uh, organizational structure chart I have taken from the site only, Airport Authority of India. On any website, you'll find some organizational chart. In that, what you should know, what is most important, that is what I'm discussing with you. So organizational structure of Airport Authority of India, at the top you get chairman and then followed by executive director, aviation safety and PMQA, chief vigilance officer, company secretary. So these are some of the domains, verticals. And then there are members, you know, uh, there are members. So you see the kind of arrows. These members are directly under chairman, that is hierarchy. These guys are also under chairman. These posts are also under chairman. But you cannot say that chief vigilance, chief vigilance officer ke under ye members aayenge. Vaisa nahi hai. So ye alag se ek vertical hai, ye alag se ek vertical hai. Thoda organizational hierarchy, you people are to understand how this hierarchy goes. Just keep these things in mind and what kind of questions will come, I will discuss with you. Then this is also, uh, again I got from their site only. Uh, Airport Authority of India. Uh, chairman is Arvind Singh, uh, is uh, IAS officer. Then Arun Kumar, Director General of Civil Aviation. He is a DG. So they are ex officio member. DG is ex officio member. You know, question can be which of the following is ex officio member. Ex officio member means who is not sitting in the office all the time, but yes, he is by virtue of his position, he is uh, representing that organization. So ex officio member is Arun Kumar, DG Civil Aviation. So Chairman, DG Civil Aviation, followed by Joint Secretary, Financial Advisor, Joint Secretary. So this is uh, basically the uh, officials who are part-time members and then the full-time, whole-time members. This is how this entire hierarchy they have shown, right? So Chairman, DG Civil Aviation. These are the two designations you need to remember, you need to keep in your mind. So what kind of designation are there? Who is the Chairman? That name also you should know. Just revise these kind of uh, uh, dignitaries and when I am going to compare it with other uh, private airlines, what is the hierarchy in the private airlines, that time also I will discuss with you some kind of correlation between these. So what is the most important part that I am telling you continuously. So Chairman, DG uh, Civil Aviation, that is the post you need to understand. DG Civil Aviation is ex officio member. This is uh, you should know and then followed by joint secretary and the members HR member operation member planning and then member ANS member finance. This is how it this all is there. Yes, then there is a, a chief vigilance officer chief vigilance officer 
uh, Amal Amal Garg, if I'm uh, pronouncing it properly, Amal Garg. He's IRS officer and now he's a chief vigilance officer of Airport Authority of India. You know, there is something which is called a citizen charter and largely citizen charter is related to vigilance. You should know what is the definition of citizen charter. That is also important thing. Every organization has citizen charter. Uh, it should have citizen charter. It is basically declaration of mission, value, standard, commitment related to quality policy for creation of honest and corruption free environment. That is what citizen charter is. So what is the definition of citizen charter is this. You should remember this is the definition of citizen charter. You know, we need to provide corruption free environment and vigilance is related to that only. Okay, and uh, citizen charter uh, uh, of airport authority of India, uh, what commitment it gives is, so we are committed to prevent occurrence of corruption or malpractices, uh, promote or cultivate culture of honesty and ethical environment integrity, you know, investigation in transparent impartial objective memory is to be done. So discipline is to be done defaulter. So you should know what is the meaning of citizen charter. And uh, you know, in airport, uh, uh, any organization expects that you should go through the website of that organization and you should have some knowledge about the uh, website. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out the most important thing which actually for exam may be required providing it to you. And that is a bare minimum requirement for you. And that is what you will observe that my lectures will not be very, very long. They will be short lecture to make it more interesting, full of only those informations which actually are required for you for exam. Citizen charter can be asked in other exams also like your engineering services exams because it is related to honesty, ethics, values, quality, etc. Okay, then we go to next is airport authority of India as of now is managing 137 airport out of which 24 are international out of which 10 are custom where custom officers are sitting 80 are domestic airports. This is the bare minimum uh, information you should have right. So this is uh, other than airport authority of India is also providing the management service. So air traffic management ka kaam kiska hai? airport authority of India. Now this is the one diagram which I could get uh, one image I could get from net where are the international airports. Just keep in mind a little bit this idea international airports. Right now let's go forward and see what is the sati satellite navigation system. You know uh, Gagan. Gagan is the project which is in collaboration with ISRO uh, a a airport authority of India has undertaken this project and this is used for navigation you know navigation signal received from GPS will be augmented to achieve the navigational requirement of the aircrafts you know so Gagan is the name you should know what is the meaning of Gagan and it is started from it is uh, in the association with ISRO so you can maybe you can see this uh, uh, master control center of ISRO handles this entire activity. Can you see there's the signals which are coming from various uh, satellites going to aircraft. So you know when you are uh, at a couple of kilometers above the uh, surface of earth, let's say 8-10 kilometers above the surface of earth. So your regular signals are not coming. So only satellite signals are working there. So G set 8, G set 10, G set 15, it is to be launched. So all these things are providing the signals to the aircraft. So this is the Gagan basically uh, project of ISRO very very important project this is another view if I can show you how GPS works so similar to that uh, the way GPS works similar to that for aircraft navigation also this Gagan is working okay so what is let's talk about something about Gagan it is acronym of GPS aided geo augmented navigation this is from where the name has come so what is Gagan G for GPS A for aided G for geo GEO geography uh, you understand so augmented enhancement navigation so it is a space based augmentation system and it was developed by airport authority of India and ISRO it is a system of satellite and ground stations which provides the GPS signal uh, now GPS alone cannot meet the requirements of aircraft navigation and hence there is a requirement of this cumulative effort from ISRO Let's go forward. Airport Authority of India has planned to provide ground based augmented system GBAS at the two airports that is Delhi and uh, Mumbai airport and it provides category two landing signal curved approach landing signals that is the meaning of it. 
and you know there's a cat 2 level cat 3a level cat 3b level what is cat level it is related to visibility and cat 3a system permits landing of aircraft when fog visibility is up to 200 meters but cat 3b will permit safe landing of the airport even if the visibility is above 50 meter but less than 200 meters so what is cat norms cat 3a cat 3b what is the visibility 50 meter plus 200 meter less so cat 3 is b is not everywhere cat 3 a cat 3 b just remember these are also important terms related to aviation right so this is something which is uh, uh, cat 2 cat 3 b cat 3 b 50 meter intensity uh, center line guidance runway taxi track parking bay and gap between center line lights i don't think that is important but what is more important is visibility so up to what visibility you should have is 50 meter plus visibility should be there cat 3 b instrument landing system that is important system here cat 2 and cat 3 right so just revise it uh, and i will send you this entire uh, document uh, on a whatsapp group i will send this to you just revise it this is very very important for this particular exam okay this is all visibility factor related to visibility factor so what is cat norm just revise this cat norm at least 300 meter visibility to land safely at airport is needed but due to climate condition especially in chandigarh international airport largely remains grounded from december mid to january mid so presently i am in chandigarh land let me tell you this airport does not work in december and january because of the fog no flight comes and chandigarh also is very close to delhi so uh, that is another uh, i will say disadvantage you know because most of the flights then will go from delhi only but delhi also there is a foggy environment and that is the reason cat 3b is required okay let's go forward now and uh, specific training centers are there in airport authority of india and uh, civil aviation training college they are called they are at Allahabad and they are at delhi fire training centers at delhi and kolkata so these are the training centers national institute of aviation management and research where is that in delhi fire training center delhi and kolkata you understand civil aviation training college that is Allahabad. so you should know where you guys are going to get trained so what was today's lecture today's lecture was all about airport authority of india ka organizational structure which aviation terms jo maine aapke saath discuss karni thi slow and steady will win the race to jitna main thoda thoda aapko videos de raha hu usko revise karte raho in terms ko apne paas stack karte raho and when the exam comes you should be fully prepared every mark will count you need to have more than 90 marks out of 120 to become ATC, air traffic control jobs mein agar tumhe jana hai ya baki executive ki job mein jana hai, you need to have this much score, fine, thank you.